Got a nice little analytic geometry problem for you guys today that really looks a lot harder than it is. But still, I think it has a pretty interesting solution, so we're gonna look at it. So we wanna find the area of the region bound by the curve defined like this. So we've got the absolute value of 2x minus one plus the absolute value of 2x plus one plus four times the absolute value of y over the square root of three equals four. And I wanna point out that this comes from a college math contest among a couple of colleges in Indiana called the Friendly Mathematics Contest, and this is from the 1991 edition. Okay, so as we can see in this equation, there's a bunch of symmetry built into it. Well, we've got this absolute value of y, which means if we replace y with negative y, then a point on the curve will be maintained. And then perhaps we've also got something to do with the x there. And so that's gonna give us symmetry in the plane across the x-axis and the y-axis. And so let's work that out really carefully. So let's first show that this is symmetric about the x-axis. So how do we do that? Well, that follows if we can show that if x and y is on the curve, then x minus y is on the curve. But notice if x and y is on the curve, that tells us that x, y satisfies this equation right here. So we've got 2x minus one plus 2x plus one plus four times absolute value of y over the square root of three equals four. But then if we replace that y with a minus y, since that's inside an absolute value, really nothing changes. So like I said, we can replace this y with a minus y, and that's gonna tell us that this point x comma minus y is on the curve. And then next, we'd like to prove something similar, but we want symmetry about the y-axis. So let's see maybe how we could prove that. So we can prove that in a similar way, but we just replace the roles of x and y in this line right here. In other words, we wanna show if x comma y is on the curve, then that implies that minus x comma y is also on the curve. So let's assume that x comma y is on the curve. I won't write that out, but that means that this equation is satisfied involving x and y. Now let's look at this equation where we've replaced x with minus x. So in this first term, that's gonna give us the absolute value of minus two x minus one. Then this second term is going to be the absolute value of minus 2x plus 1. And then we'll have everything else the same. So we've got 4 times absolute value of y over the square root of 3 equals 4. But now notice we can factor a minus 1 out of that and have that disappear. And that's going to give us the absolute value of 2x plus 1. And likewise, we can factor a minus 1 out of this and have it disappear. That'll give us the absolute value of 2x minus 1. So replacing x with minus x just has the effect of switching this term with this term. So if this equation is satisfied, then this equation right here is satisfied. And we have symmetry about the y-axis. So that together with symmetry about the x-axis means all we need to do is find the corresponding area in the first quadrant and then multiply that by four since there are four quadrants. So let's get rid of this and then we'll calculate that area in the first quadrant. So on the last board we argued that our total area will be four times the area in quadrant one. Let's recall that quadrant one is all of the points where x is bigger than or equal to zero and y is bigger than or equal to zero. So let's see what that will give us. Notice we're gonna have to break this into two pieces based on when the interior of this absolute value is positive or negative. And we only have to look at that because in the first quadrant, this is always positive and this is also always positive. So notice that this is negative if x is between zero and a half, but then it's positive everywhere after that. So that means we're gonna to need to look at two regions. We'll need to look at the region when x is between zero and one half. I'll just put not including one half. Then we're also gonna look at the case when x is between one half 
and infinity. And we'll see that there will be an upper bound on x, but we don't a priori know what that is. Okay, so let's see what we can do now. So if x is between 0 and 1 half, that means that this absolute value of 2x minus 1 will actually be 1 minus 2x. That's because this interior is negative, so in order to take the absolute value, you multiply by negative 1. Okay, so that means that our given equation, which is defining this curve, can be rewritten without absolute values as 1 minus 2x plus... 2x plus 1 plus 4 times y over root 3 equals 4. Notice I just got rid of all of the absolute values, taking a minus sign when I needed to. But now notice that this guy will cancel with this guy. Then we have 1 plus 1 is 2. Move that over. That's going to make this guy into a 2. And then next we can maybe divide by four and multiply by three, and that tells us that y is equal to the square root of three over two. So notice that's gonna be like a horizontal line segment where we have x between zero and a half. So we'll hang on to that for later. So next we have the region when x is bigger than or equal to a half. So in this case, both of these terms are positive inside of the absolute value, so we can just delete the absolute value. So that means that our equation now looks like this. 2x minus 1 plus 2x plus 1 plus 4y over radical 3 equals 4. Okay, now some other stuff cancels. So this 1 and this negative 1 cancels. Then we have 2x plus 2x is 4x. We can move that to the other side of the equation, giving us 4y over root 3 equals minus 4x plus 4, like that. We can divide everything by 4 and multiply by the square root of 3 to give us y equals negative root 3x plus root 3. So I want to notice that that is a line with a slope of negative root 3 and a y-intercept of the square root of 3. Notice it also has an x-intercept of 1. So the fact that it has an x-intercept of 1 means it takes on negative values after 1, which means we in fact do not need all of these values of x. We just take x between 1 half and 1. Because past 1, well, we are outside of the first quadrant. So let's summarize that at the top and then we'll finish it off. So on the last board, we arrived at the following kind of setup. We have when x is on the interval 0 to a half, y is this horizontal line segment. And then when x is on the interval half to 1, y is this line with the following slope and y-intercept. So we need a minus sign right there. Then furthermore, if x is bigger than 1, we're outside of the first quadrant because the y value will be negative. Okay, so let's draw a picture of what's happening in the first quadrant now. So I'll maybe make my first quadrant like this. Notice that x values of 1 half and 1 will be important. So I'll maybe put 1 half right here, and then I'll put a 1 right here. So notice between 0 and 1 half, my graph is at this root 3 over 2 spot. So I'll put my root 3 over 2 right here, and then I've got a line segment from here to here. Maybe I'll put an open circle there, but as we'll see, that doesn't really matter. Then next, from 1 half to 1, we're on that line with the negative slope, and that actually will go from this point right here down to this point right here. So now we just need to find the area of this region and then multiply it by 4, but that shouldn't be too hard to do because notice we have the area of this purple rectangle and then the area of this red triangle. So let's maybe see what we get. So our total area, which I will call A, will be equal to 4 times this area right here. So notice that the area of the purple bit, I'll go ahead and underline that in purple so that we can see it really easily, will be 1 half times root 3 over 2. So that's going to be root 3 over 4. 
and then plus the area of this red bit, which I'll underline in red, will be given by one half base times height, but notice that's gonna be one half times root three over two times a half because this base has a length of a half. So that's gonna give us root three over eight. Now all we really need to do is some arithmetic, and after some fairly simple arithmetic, we see that our final solution is three times the square root of three over two, and that's a good place to stop.